my children, I love my mother, I love my father, I love all of you all, but can't nobody do it like Jesus. Hey, Amen. Look at somebody and tell them, hey, I really do love you, but you can't do it like Jesus. You can't give me peace, you can't give me deliverance, you can't give me joy, you can try to give me money, but you can't buy my peace, you can't buy my money. They won't take care of my home. Hey, hey, man, I, I'll accept the money, but look at somebody and tell them, hey, well, it ain't no comparison to peace. No comparison to joy, but it's got plenty of rich folks who still don't have peace. Amen. One thing I like that stood out, she said, 
Amen. If he don't make the situation all right, he gonna make me all right. That's Amen. Right. Sometimes that's what it's all about. That's Amen. Right. You know, I know this is how I'm learning, man. We always want to pray a situation away, but uh, maybe that situation is there for the betterment of you. Hello, somebody. Amen. Sometimes we always want to call the devil and everything else. Maybe the problem is us sometimes. We got us using that situation. Hello, somebody. Amen. Amen. I thank God for situations and everything give thanks for this evil little of God concerning you. Amen. You may not feel like giving him thanks for it, but in it, Look at somebody tell them, give him thanks. For this is the will of God. We want to know the will of God. Help us, somebody. We always search what is the will of God. Look at those scriptures that deal with will of God. And you'll find out what the will of God is in your life. Hello, somebody. Put those hands together for the testimony. Amen. Thank you, Lord. I give unto God tonight. Praise God. Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. I thank and I praise God for our overseers. Praise God. I honor Pastor and Sister Demas on tonight. Truly love them on tonight. To all the saints of God, I just praise God for blessing me to be back into the house of prayer once again. I'm excited about Jesus in my life. You know, I just got in mixed emotions on tonight. I started to say a little song. I said, no, I ain't going to do that. And then I said, I want to talk a little bit, but I ain't going to talk long. But hallelujah. I what said, you going to do? Hallelujah. I said, well, I ain't going to talk long. I'm going to say something, but I ain't going to talk long. But hallelujah. Watch your well, face. For me, my each and every need, making ways for me. Yes. You know, I don't take nothing for granted. Even little small things, I thank God. Yes. I was thinking last night, you know, I like to wake up uh, early in the morning, about 3 30, 4 o'clock in the morning, and yes. talk and pray to the Lord. I have to be so quiet, I enjoy that. But my neighbors was cutting up last night with that loud music. I said, Lord, now they got to cut that off, because you know, I love sitting here talking to you around about this time. Yes. So I said, Well, I'm going to pray anyhow. And just tune them out. It wasn't very long, but God just shut that music down. You can hold it up. You can hold it up. You know, that may not mean much to y'all, but it is. God is a good God. I mean, to me, that means just a little bit of things God just be doing, doing for us. I just love him for that. I thank God for the, the word I heard this morning. And I was listening to Apostle Mary when I got home. I'm almost through, not long. And you know, he was talking about the same thing that a Pastor Demas, you know, preached on this morning. You know, that's wonderful. That should encourage us as saints of God to know that we have a God that we can trust on tonight. And I just thank God for that and ask y'all to remember me when y'all pray, when y'all, when the spirit real hot on you. When I mean really hot on you, Brother Banks, call my name. Amen. Certainly, amen. I am enjoying myself. 
Amen. If you need to humble note, let the usher know. Amen. This is the time we can still be joyful. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. What do you have? We want you to give as unto the Lord. Amen. And we heard it down through the years. I'm convinced the world should not be uh, uh, more excited and, and seemingly great joy than what we have. We have Christ. We have the Holy Ghost. Amen. We, we have eternal life. Amen. So even when things are not so good, we can join the fact that, amen, when this is all over, hello, somebody. Amen. When this, this is all over, we got a mention in the sky. Amen. We thank God. Amen. Amen. Everybody had an opportunity. Come on, step to your feet. Amen. Into the hands of all the of our worship. Everyone just stand, bring the offer to the Lord. All right, then.
because he issues out the fruit of the Spirit for a purpose. That we may go through the troubles that we have. If we have trouble in our lives and people want to know, how did you go through that? Right, right. Without losing your sanity. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Well, the Holy Spirit will give us the spirit of joy. The fruit of joy. Yeah. He'll, give, he'll, have a, he'll let us have joy in the midst of our trouble. That world will understand that. How can you have peace? Right. That's the fruit of the spirit. How can you have peace in your heart, in your mind, when things are going on like this in your life? This is what the fruit of the Spirit is for. It's not just something that we display. You see, we have to understand why he's given us the fruit of the Spirit. Because through this walk of life, we're going to have some trouble. We're going to have some trials, tribulations. And the only way we're going to make it through this life is that the Holy Spirit issues out fruits of the Spirit. That's how he leads his life. Meekness, you see. When you're supposed to be angry, you meet. <laughs> Moses was considered one of the meekest men that ever walked the face of the earth. That's right. That's the word. You see. So we have to have the fruit of the Spirit to continue on in this life. Mm -hmm. And this is what we're going to look at. All right. Now turn your Bibles to Galatians, the fifth chapter. Mm -hmm. And we're going to begin. <coughs> I believe that's sixteen verse. Yeah, that's what we're going to begin at the sixteenth verse. And I want you to listen because after being born again, we have to go on and receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And when we receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, that's when the Holy Spirit uh, gives with liberality the fruits of the Spirit. He may give some one person this and give one person that. Right. He may give more to one person and give less to another person. That's true. But the fact is, whatever we need, he knows what we need. Yeah. Yeah. He knows what's going to help us uh, uh, walk in this walk of life. Mm -hmm. Because we can't walk this life without the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Because the Holy Spirit is power yeah. to do the Holy Spirit gives us power to live this life. Yes. <coughs> Excuse me. Mm -hmm. To live this life according to the will of God. Mm -hmm. If we want to understand the will of God, then it's going to be by the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Because he's the one that gives us the desire to get in God's word. Mm -hmm. He's the one that gives us a desire to love God. Because we can't love God without the Holy Spirit of God. Yes. Because he is love. Yes. You see, so he imparts his love in our heart right. after being born again. You see, so we have to understand these things. Why do the Holy Spirit gives us the fruits of the Spirit? Mm -hmm. You see, because we're going to have to live this life. Yeah. We're going to have to walk this life, mm -hmm. and we must be a demonstration to that world. Because they all working as one unit. That's right, that's right. 
So, oh, I can, I can work without this pinky finger. Let something happen to it. Yeah. You're going to find out that that pinky finger, that little member of the hand, is very body. You see. You think you don't need that hair on your body. Women like to shave it off. I like to shave this off because it's irritating sometimes. But it serves a purpose. You see, everything about the human body serves a purpose. And you know how the human, look how the human body works in harmony with one another. It works as one unit. And the church is called what? The body of Christ. Many different members, but it's function as one unit. Everybody getting along. Everybody in their place. Because the Holy Spirit puts you there. Whatever the hurt is the Holy Spirit puts you, you're supposed to work like that. Right? To full capacity. And he is the one that exalts you. You see. We don't want to, we, we, don't even, we don't even, we ain't concerned about our pinky toe. Ain't even give, gave, gave it no consideration. Break it. You're going to find out how important it is. I don't, I don't even consider my pinky toe. I don't even consider my big toe. But I stomped it one day. You know how that is. You just sit up there and boom, you hit it. And you won't find out how to put that toe in, but it don't work for a few days. Because you ain't going to be able to put pressure on that foot. You ain't going to be able to walk. You're going to be limping by because you hit that big toe. All the toes are important. All the fingers are important. Right. You see, when I started taking dialysis, I didn't know how bad dialysis was. Mm -hmm. Until one day, I tried to squat down and stand back up. Mm -hmm. I had no strength. Mm -hmm. I was walking, I had just took her to work, and I'm going, I'm going to dialysis. And I don't know what I hear, but next thing you know, I was laying flat on my face. And so normally you just get up and go. Don't you know I couldn't even stand up wow. because my leg was so weak? I could just get up like that. I had to crawl mm -hmm. over to a pole yeah. mm -hmm. so I could balance myself and get up. Wow. And that's when I realized, listen, I got a problem. My legs are so weak I can't even do the simple thing. How am I going to strengthen my legs back? That's what, you know, I got I to take certain pills so uh, my bones don't deteriorate. Mm -hmm. And I don't get a heart attack. That's what dialysis do. You, it cleans your blood, take the fluid out, but it also damages you. Mm -hmm. I get finished. I'm so weak, I'm struggling. I get up to try to walk to the car. I barely make it. Mm -hmm. And now I got to drive. skills, in other words. I can drive. <laughs> you see, but it's amazing how this stuff just deteriorates your mind. And I said, Lord, I got work for you to do. I gotta, you got work for me to do. Mm -hmm. And I can't, I, I know you're not going to allow me to go down like that. Mm -hmm. So when we got home today, I said,
Amen. In the 16th verse, listen to what Paul said. He said, this I say then, walk in the spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. This is very important. You see, if you don't want to do, uh, get caught up in the, in the flesh, Paul says very simple, walk in the spirit. How do you resist the devil? The Bible said, resist the devil, he'll what? Flee from you. But the only way that you can resist him, Jesus showed us in the temptation of Jesus. When the devil came to him, Jesus fasted 40 days and 40 nights. And the Bible said after that, he was hungry. And what did Satan do? He come and attack his hunger. It got me son of God. First of all, you know who he is. Beyond the shadow of doubt. See, uh, uh, Satan is not looking at that form that Jesus came in. He's seeing the spiritual side of Jesus. Because he knows exactly. That's why they said when the, when the demons came, we know who you are. Thou the son of the most high. Now, if they saw it, you know that chief devil saw it with the same. Amen. If thou be the son of God. Get him try to adopt his deity. Yeah. Now, if thou be the son of God, he said, turn these stones into bread. He's attacking the human side. Because when Jesus came here, he came here as a man. He was still God, but he did not have the power. He did not have all the things. He left all that in heaven. Because he had to defeat sin in the flesh. But you know what he did? He went down filled with the Spirit first. Before he did anything, he went down to the river Jordan. And he received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. He received power. And after that, the Bible said the same spirit that filled him led him into the wilderness to be the tempted of the devil. <laughs> because the devil had right to tempt him. Why? Because he came in the flesh. That's why he was led there, because Satan had right to tempt him. Because he came there as a man. In order for us to understand and order for us to defeat the devil, Jesus had to lay it out. If that be the Son of God, you know who he is. <laughs> Turn these stones into bread. They try to quote scriptures on You quote scripture to the word. <laughs> See, listen. There's one thing to be a fool. But you will bring a fool if you follow that fool. That, 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 the devil is a fool. He knows that this is the Son of God. Ain't going to say if thou be. Trying to get him to operate independent of his father. Right, right, right. Which is not going to happen. Right. And we ought to be the same way when we feel with the Spirit. When Satan comes to us and God will allow him to come and tempt us. There's a reason for that. Because now that we have power, and the, and the Scripture said, if you walk in the Spirit, you shall not. In other words, it's impossible. To fill the love, fulfill the lust of the flesh. Mm -hmm. Satan only operates in the flesh. That's the grounds of his operation. If you walk in, in the flesh, then he has control over you. He controlled me for 30 years until Christ came in my life. And you know what happened then? I no longer walked in the flesh. I was no longer bound by the flesh because it takes power to deliver you from yourself. You think, you, you think you're the nicest, wonderfulest person in the world. But if you ain't walking in the spirit, you ain't nothing towards God. Mm -hmm. You're going to need deliverance. Because the flesh cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven. Mm -hmm. God is going to destroy that flesh. God is going to put it down. Because it's corrupt. You see, ain't no sense to clean. It's like waste. You can't do nothing with waste to get, get rid of it. If we're not born again, we're just simply a waste of human flesh. Mm. Until God comes and purifies and sanctifies. You see. So he said, if you walk in the spirit, ye shall not fulfill 
the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit. And the spirit against the flesh, and they're contrary. In other words, they don't agree. They can't dwell together. They can't have union together. They can't communicate together. One of them will have to be put down. They lust against each other. In other words, they're against each other. One want to overthrow the other. The flesh don't want the, the new man to come in. Because he knows if the new man comes in, he's going to have to get put down. He's going to have to go. You see. And there is a continuous warfare in that body. See, when you, when you, when you walk in in the flesh, there is no warfare. They're just complete dominance by the flesh. Yeah, right, right, right. But when the Spirit of God is birthed in your heart, okay, now, there's a light. There's a squabbling going on inside you. Not the squabbling. See, you know, you know, people say, you know, I can fight. But when they can't make the squabbling, they can go back. <laughs> squabbling is something different. I said, yeah, he can fight. That fellow right there can squat. I don't know if he can throw that. I see. There's a spiritual warfare going in inside you, and somebody's going to win. That's right. That's right. That's why we must pay close attention to the new man. We must strengthen the new man. We must feed the new man. How are we going to do that? By fasting and praying and singing God. Yes. Consecrate yourself. Mm -hmm. Turn everything off that that flesh loves to do. Mm -hmm. We must shut it down. Mm -hmm. Even eating and drinking. Mm -hmm. I didn't have much problem with eating. But I had problems with this metro. <laughs> and God had to deliver me from it. I first had to realize that I had a problem. I didn't have I didn't think I had no problem. But yeah, yeah, yeah. well, that's that old man trying to destroy me. Because I retain fluid. And your body can only retain so much. After a while, you will have a very, very serious problem. Yes, yes. The last time I went to the hospital, Chinese doctor came in there. Mr. Demas, what seems to be your problem? I said, I'm going to have he said, yes, you do, because you in here. I said, wait a minute, young man. <laughs> he, was, he, was, he was very, very uh, uh, serious. He said, don't you know if you would have kept on for six days, he said, you would have died. He said, your body can only, only take so much. And he gave me an example of that. He said, there was a man that I was treating. And he has the same problem with you that you have. And I ain't got no problem. But I had to admit that I had a problem though for God to help. Yeah, 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 yeah. Help him, help him. He said you had he got you had he had the same problem that you had. He said, I will get that fluid off of him. Then you know what he'll do? He'll go back out there. Mm. And he'll drink so much fluid that he's back in here. Mm. And he said the body can only take so much. And he went too far. Mm. He said he drowned in his own food. Mm. He said. The young man was just 23 years old. Wow. He said, that's what's happening to you. He said, you can't continue to do such a thing. So I had, he said, we want to be very aggressive in pulling this fluid off. They pulled 14 pounds of fluid in one day. Wow. Six kilos. And, every, and, and that's, that's very high. He was not cleaning my blood. He was just pulling fluid. He said, now, if you don't get yourself together, yeah, yeah. he said, you will die. The man was just straightforward. Mm -hmm. Right, right. He said, now, what are you drinking today? I said, I'm, I'm just drinking about a week today. He said, no, you're not, because if you was, you wouldn't be in here. Mm -hmm. The man was just hard and straightforward. Mm -hmm. And that's what it took for me to get myself together. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be this beautiful woman. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Amen. She's born for two or three years and she's married again. I'm going to have to come back again. <laughs> 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 I 
Lord, just let me come back for one, two, three minutes and scare the devil. <laughs> so the best thing I need to do is quit drinking. <laughs> so much. Yeah. You got to have the food, but I got to watch what I do. Mm -hmm. Satan don't care how he gets you. Come on, come on. So as long as he gets you. Mm -hmm. Whatever problem you have, he's going to get in there. Mm -hmm. You see. Some of the problems we bring on ourselves, but we give the devil opportunity to step in that problem. Right. And make it worse than what it is. That's so true. That's so true. For the spirit, lust against the flesh, and the flesh, lust against the spirit, they're contrary. Make it on your own story. The Holy Spirit is letting me know you can't drink that much. I got a work for you to do. But if I continue disobeying the Holy Spirit, then that's sin. The Bible said, quench not the spirit. That's right. Don't you know you can quench him? That's right. If, uh, 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 uh what's that oh. man's name? Man, sometimes I get up there and I forget. Samson, there you go. <laughs> if Samson can come back and tell you, he'll tell you, don't do it. Because he messed with that, but God said, leave him alone. Yeah. He was messing with. Uh, forbidden fruit. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Delilah. Mm -hmm. Her name simply means bring low. Mm -hmm. And what did she do? She bought that man. She worked on that man. Until he told her the secret of his power. Mm -hmm. It was in his hair. Mm -hmm. Because he was a Nazarene with, uh, when he was born. Mm -hmm. and, and they said, listen, don't let a razor come to your hair. Right. And don't drink no strong drink. Right, right. Samson played with that when God said leave alone. Mm -hmm. To the point he went too far. Right. Come on, come on. And he told the secret of his strength. Mm -hmm. And what she do? She put him to sleep. Mm -hmm. Listen, I lay in my life now. Look at her face. I'm done. I ain't got no hair for her to cut, though. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't got nothing for her to cut. But don't you know Samson went to sleep and she slipped, slipped away. Yes, she did. And then she called on the Philistine and they come. He got up and said, I'm going to shake myself like I'm on. He didn't even know the spirit was gone. Right. He pushed the spirit. He'll come in with a shout. But the Holy Spirit leaves so very quiet. You think you still got together. He ain't even gone for years. Mm. This is what we have to be careful of. As when men and women of God, we got to make sure that we don't quench the spirit, because we can still speak in tongues, we can still perform everything that we did when the Holy Spirit was with us, and knowing that don't even know that the Holy Spirit is gone. But the Philistines make sport of him, dug his eyes out, put him in the middle by the Colosseum, and, 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 and make sport of him, mock him. But here's how foolish the devil is. Mm -hmm. The Bible said, how be it? Mm -hmm. His hair began to grow. Yep, yep, yep. They should have kept them scissors and razors in their hair. <laughs> every time they see that, I cut them all, and every time I see it getting dark, I cut it again. Mm -hmm. But the Bible said, how be it? His hair began to grow. Yeah. And then he intrigued God. Mm -hmm. yeah. You see, he won't have to pay for what he did. But he said, Lord, let me revenge myself mm -hmm. this last time. Mm -hmm. my, my, my. And God heard his prayer. Mm -hmm. God heard his cry. Mm -hmm. And a little boy, he said, lead me to the pillars. Mm -hmm. that, that the one that holds everything up. Mm -hmm. And this one last time, my, he avenged himself. And the Bible said he killed more than his death than he did. And he like, mm -hmm. Go on, get out of here, son. Because some things are about to happen. Mm -hmm. I don't know how they didn't see him. But he got between those pillars and God gave him <coughs> yes, yes, yes. And that Coliseum went down. Mm -hmm. With everybody in it. Yes, yes. Well, it don't have to be like that. Right, right, right. All we got to do is simply obey God. <laughs> we got to know what's going on inside of us when we get born again. There is a spiritual warfare. 
And this spiritual warfare is concerning eternal life and death. Satan comes only what? To steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus said, I come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. That abundant life is the life that Jesus lived, which is eternal life, you see. So he said, he said, for the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. These are contrary one to another. So that you cannot do the things that you would which is obedience to God. He said, but if ye be led of the Spirit, ye are not under the law. No one can fulfill the law. Because the law did one thing. It showed us who we really were. But it did not have no power to save you. That's why the priest, once a year, go into the holies of holies. And they bring a sacrifice for the people, and he also brings a sacrifice for himself. And he has to do this once a year. Why? Because the law could not save nobody. Right. It condemned you. Yes, right. But the law was just and it was holy. Yes. It was good. Why? Because it came from God. Yes. He gave us the law. But no man could fulfill it. The rich young ruler, he came to Jesus. And he said, listen, I kept the law from my youth up. What is it that I lack? Like? And Jesus told him, listen, everything that you got, sell it and give it to the poor and come and follow me and you have riches in heaven. But because he was under the law, he could not do it. The Bible said he went away and he, his confidence failed because he had much goods. The goods had him. He didn't have the goods. Because if he had the good, then he would have got rid of it. But because he was so tied to his material things, he couldn't get rid of it. And he, he didn't hear nothing else about it. Jesus offered him something great. Jesus said, sell what you have. Come follow me. And he said, you will have riches in heaven. You see what Jesus offered him? He offered him something way greater than what he had. But when you're so caught up in the affairs of this life, you can't see what Jesus is giving you, what he's offering you, lest you be born again. You see? I can have $10 million. But they say, listen, give it to, uh, donate it to different orphanages and things of that nature. And Jesus said, come and follow me. He said, I'll give you riches in heaven. I believe I'm, I, I'm able to do such a thing. Because you know what? I'm content in the situation that I am. I'm satisfied. I can have, it doesn't matter if I have a five bedroom home. I'd like to have one. But I got a one bedroom with an old part. But you know what? I got a roof over my head. Oh, man. No. I got air conditioning. No. I got a fish ready with food in it. No. You got drinks in it too. <laughs> Limited. <laughs> I got a couch that I can lay on. Yes, sir. If I want to watch TV, all I got to do is hit the button. Right. Come on. I got a nice old bed to sleep in. Yes. And she's there with me too. That's the best part. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm satisfied now. Right, yes, sir. If the Lord bless me with something bigger, that'd be awesome. Right, right, right. But right now, I'm content. You see, yes. There's not that, that, that kind of warfare going on in me. Come on, right. To where I desire material. We live in a materialistic world. That's so true. That's so true. If we're not careful, we'll become materialistic. Right. Don't you know materialism? Materialism is just as, as intoxicating as drugs and alcohol. Right. There's people that live and die by them. They won't find things in life. And they'll do anything to get it. They'll leave God. I'm talking about church folk. I'm not talking about that world. Come on. Anytime a church, hey, listen, we don't have the faith like we should. Anytime we face a big crisis, the first thing that we want to do is get out of church. <laughs> Anytime we have financial difficulty, the first thing we want to do is get out of church. 
when God has the answer to everything. Yes. You know, before I got saved, I worked two jobs. One time I had three. Two full time, one on the weekend. Mm. It didn't profit me nothing. Mm. I had nothing to show for it wow. but a sick body. Mm-hmm. I worked myself to death just about. I got sick one day. Really sick. And I went to the doctor. I was married to her again and declared my name. And he said, What's wrong? I said, you know, I just feel sick. I feel like I got a flu or something. So he ran some tests. He came back. He said, you just have the common cold. He said, but your immune system is so low. It's like you got a double pneumonia. He says, young man, what are you doing? Tell me what your routine is. Mm-hmm. I said, well, I get up and I, I said, I just worked since you. He said, well, where do you work at? I said, well, I work at J.Y. Taylor in the morning. I work at the city guard. He said, stop right there. He said, you're working yourself to death. He said, one of the jobs got to go. Mm-hmm. Wow. He said, you're so sick now, you can catch anything. Wow. And it can be the death of you because your immune system is so low. Mm-hmm. It didn't profit me nothing to work at all. Mm-hmm. Now all I'm dealing with is different issues in my body. Mm-hmm. Because I used to never get sick. Mm-hmm. But I got sick that one time. And I've been sick ever since. Mm. I got diabetes, high blood pressure, congestive heart failure, edema. All these symptoms in my body. Why? Because I was after material things. Mm. And when it's all said and done, where is it at? I don't have nothing to show for it. Mm. And now, I can't. I take a physical, I feel it so fast, and we can't escape. Ain't nobody can hurt me. I try to go back to craft one day, they smile at me. How do you feel? First day, they smile. How do you feel? You still sick? I said, see you later. Good as the work I was, they wouldn't go hire me because I cost them money. And when you cost them money, they don't want nothing to do with you. I don't care how good a worker you are. I try to get hired on something. Together, drink together, smoke together. You got to cut them loose. Mm-hmm. 
I don't care if you've been knowing each other since you were one year old. Some of the greatest, hardest ties to break is those neighborhood friends that you grew up with. I've been both. I've been knowing him since he was six years old. And I said, cut it loose. Because light and darkness don't dwell in the same place. As soon as we turn these lights on, darkness had to go away. And light is greater than darkness. Darkness don't come in and take over light. Light takes over darkness. We are children of the light. Not children. We were children of darkness before we got born again. But the light came in and shined in our heart and darkness went away. You see, this is what we have to understand. We're not under the law. Because the law couldn't do nothing for them but condemn us, you see. It says, now, the works of the flesh, listen, are manifest, which are these. Now, I want you to see how long this list is. <laughs> this is a long list. Come on. And then we're going to look at the fruits of the Spirit. The fruits of the Spirit is a short list compared to this long list. And, and while I'm mentioning things, Remember that we was in these. We were doing these. these we were doing the works of the flesh. Yeah, that's right. Something in here is it, 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 pointing right at us, and maybe it's a few things. But God delivered us from all these things. But listen to the works of the flesh. It said the works of the flesh are manifest, which are which is adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness. Now adultery. That's when a man or a woman steps out on their marriage. But don't you know there's spiritual adultery, spiritual fornication, and these are the first two that I mentioned. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, that's idol worship, witchcraft, ain't got no business coming up spells. You ain't got no business sitting on the floor in the middle of your house. <laughs> you know, I know somebody they got a big car and want to come live without me. First of all, I get up and you got a car spread out on that floor. I'm going to tear the place up. <laughs> Witchcraft. Witchcraft, listen, is a bad thing. You in your kitchen boiling toenails and burning <laughs> all kinds of stuff, just conjuring up a spade. Don't you know that stuff is real? Yes, yes, yes. yes. You play with the devil? Come on. Come on now. He gonna come in there and you gonna he gonna he gonna let he gonna let you do something. He gonna let you see. Listen, most times when you get to deal with, with witchcraft, the first thing that comes is spirits. Yeah. And one of them spirits gonna lay hold of you. And you won't really believe that stuff is real. You know, I used to watch, you know, a lot of horror shows. But the Holy Spirit convicted me. Now when I see one, you know, especially, you know, I just I used to just wipe that stuff. I guess something's wrong with me. I don't know. God had to deliver me, but he delivered me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I don't even touch it. I don't, even, I don't even watch TV as much. And if it is on, I ain't looking at it. That's right. Yeah. But you got to be careful of what you watch on TV. That's right. That's right. These spirits are real. That's right. That's right. And if you play with it too much, don't you know those spirits will attach themselves to you? That's right. I, 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 I was talking to a young man. And he told me that, you know, God delivered him. You know, alcohol and drugs. He said, one time I was so, so drunk and so high. He said, I was looking at a picture of a pair on the wall. He said, when I looked at it, he said, I started doing this. He said, the pair came off the wall. And then he said, he took off money. He turned around. He said, the whole world was after you. Son, the whole world ain't after you. But it's those spirits, those demons. Mm -hmm. I said, that's the bottom of that bottle. <laughs> you done drunk up all that stuff, mm -hmm. and now you're hallucinating. Mm -hmm. That's the spirit of the devil. Mm -hmm. And we 
have to be careful what we watch. We have to be careful what we touch. Amen. Don't you know they got Ouija boards? Yeah. You know the exorcism is something that truly happened. You know how that devil got in that child? Through a Ouija board. Yes, we have to be careful yeah. of what we watch, what we read, what we touch. <laughs> we can't touch nothing. That's why it says uncleanliness. Yeah. We can't touch nothing that's unclean. And that's talking about this present evil in this world. Sin is unclean. Mm -hmm. That's why he said make a difference between clean and unclean, holy and unholy. Mm -hmm. We have to know the difference between that. And what is unholy, what is unclean, we as a people of God, we're not supposed to touch, you see. So look at this list. It says witchcraft, hatred. Ooh, hatred is a bad thing, too. Mm -hmm. that, if you hate your brother and your sister, the Bible said you were murdered. Right. Not a physical murder, uh -huh. but spiritual. Because you will kill their character. You don't become a character killer. Right. Because you ain't going to do nothing but put them down and talk about them. If you hate somebody, you resent them, you hate them. You don't like them. There's nothing wrong with not liking somebody. But you must love them with the love of God. You see. So hatred, variance, emulation, wrath, strife, sedition, heresy, envy, murder, drunkenness, revelation. And such like of, 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 of that which I tell you before, I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of heaven. <laughs> Drunkenness, envy, all this list. This list is long. And that's just not all. That's just some of the things that Paul is mentioning. Mm -hmm. That list is extremely long. So it's easy to go ahead. That's why we got to allow the Holy Spirit to clean us up. Mm -hmm. Deliver us from all sin. And don't say I don't have a problem because if you say you don't have one, you got one. Yeah. I don't think there's nothing wrong with that when you got a problem. Because of some no harm things that we as believers mm -hmm. should not do. Mm -hmm. What's wrong with going to the liquor store? Cashing your check or getting something to drink? Well, if somebody see you, you went in there, you came out there with a, a 20 ounce soda, but when they get finished with you, <laughs> you don't bought half the liquor store. <laughs> we have to be careful. The Bible said, don't let your good works be evil spoken. So there's some no harm thing that, 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 that we have to stay away from. Mm -hmm. That's true. That's true. Because we got character killers out there. Mm -hmm. So we have to be careful. If you love Jesus, then you want to be careful where you go, how you talk. This is what we have to understand. We got to learn how to walk with Christ. We got to allow the Holy Spirit to teach, lead, and guide us into all truth. We got to let the Holy Spirit take over our lives. We got to let the Holy Spirit teach us how to conduct ourselves around people. Because it's easy to mess up. And when you mess up, folks hold that over your head. You can do everything right. And it takes a lifetime to build up a good reputation. But it takes a second to ruin it. Don't you know that there's people that have been married for 40, 50 years and something simple as not washing the dishes destroy that marriage. Mm -hmm. Something simple as financial problem will destroy that marriage if you did. Mm -hmm. Got to be careful because mm -hmm. the devil don't care. Exactly. Right. You heard that talk about uh, killing two birds with one stone. Mm -hmm. That's what the devil tried to do. He's after those seasoned saints. The one that have the, the persuasion over the of the other saints, you see, the one that, 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 that's the built up, the pillars of the church, you see. That's the one he's after. Because if he can get one of those, he can destroy a great percentage of the church. I mean, I mean, that's so true. The ones that have great influence over the other saints, you see. You have those in every church. That one that's been there for a long time, that one that's been walking with God. 
for a long time. And you can just see the holiness all over them. Right. And you want to associate your life with them. But that's the one of them one because most of the time we put too much faith in the saints. Yeah, exactly. Come on, man. I haven't heard what I said. Yes. Now, if you can't put too much, your faith belongs to Jesus. Amen. You may look up to them, you may honor them, but you got to make sure they're not your God. Amen. You got that in the church today. You got pastor and wife worship. Mm -hmm. You love your pastor and wife, and you give the man to you give the honor to what honors do. Right. And the Bible says when it comes to that man of God, you give the honor. You go beyond that. That's sin. Amen. That's Amen. idolatry. Yeah. Our idolatry comes in many shapes, form, and fashion. Make it plain. And we have to be careful. Yeah. Because sin is very. It go, it comes in many different ways. Yes, it does. Wow. Nothing wrong with honoring your pastor and that wife. The Bible says so. But that's all you're supposed to do is honor them. You don't worship them. Come on. You so caught up in them, they said, Mary had a little lamb. And y'all shout out in the church. He didn't say nothing. <laughs> but because you got this, this, this worship over them, <laughs> whatever they say, they tan the church up. That's not God. Get excited about the word of God. Come on now. It's the word of God that excites me. It's the word of God that changes me. It is going to be the word of God that keeps me. Amen. I love the man of God and his wife. Amen. Amen. But I give him double honor. And that's it. He's not my God. He has nowhere to send me. All he has to do is preach that word. Yeah. And then he made that decision. Yeah. My job is to put it out there. Yeah. Yeah. One plant, I'm on water. one water, but uh, uh, it's God. Uh, it's God. It's God. It's God. It's God. God has called me and he gave me a job to do. Right, right. He said, preach the gospel. Thank you. He that believed and is baptized shall be saved. And he that believe it not shall be damned. Mm -hmm. So I come to save your damn mm -hmm. in the believing of the gospel. Yes, you look at Noah. The Bible said he was a preacher of righteousness. Mm -hmm. right. And only eight got on that boat. Everything else he damned there. Mm -hmm. You see, this is what we have to understand. We got to know our place in God. This is very vital. We got to find out why did God call us? What did He call us to? And am I doing what He has called me to do? Because if you not, I believe that's sin of omission. <laughs> Knowing that God has called you to do something, but you refuse to do it. You got a lot of people like that. You got a lot of a lot of men and women that's supposed to function in the body of Christ, but they refuse to do it. You know, I want to, you know, try to be humble. You know, you got false humility. I just, I, mean, I just want to be, I just want to be back here behind the scene. You know you want to be seen. <laughs> Do what God calls you. That's it. That's all. Everything that God does is a manifestation to that world. I don't care if you if you out there cut the yard, if you clean the church. God wanted to be manifested because you're faithful in what you do. It doesn't matter your position. Mm -hmm. You have to be faithful to it. Mm -hmm. You have to be obedient to it. And then God will bless you. Listen, we still, when I first got born again, I went to the Bible. Listen, we done cut y'all. We clean the church. We doing toilets. We doing all kinds of stuff. Mm -hmm. Sleeping so I don't be painting. We doing all kinds of stuff. Putting up tents and everything. Listen, and God will exalt you in due time. Because of your faithfulness to him. I didn't do it for the man, I did it for God. I don't do nothing for man. Everything I do is for Jesus. Excuse me. Maybe I need to get some.
this one is good. Next. Our Lord is good. Well, everything I do is for Jesus. I love my wife because God gave me the ability to love her like this Bible says. Love your wife like Christ loved the church. That's the word. What did Christ do? He died. He showed great love for the church. And we're supposed to do the same thing with our wives. I ain't got no business putting my hands on that woman. She going to try to fight me back anyway. <laughs> I don't want to bruise that pretty face. I don't want to do nothing to her but love her. Instead of hitting it, I'm going to give her a peck on the cheek. Because God has put that type of love in me. To where I can love her like this Bible said. We got to do everything like this Bible said. And the Bible said, be submissive. Amen. Until you don't love. Don't be submissive to this other man. You will cause some trouble. You don't have me to beat him up. Because you've been subjected to him. You're supposed to be subjected unto me. That's right. That's what the Bible says. <laughs> and we got to do exactly what this word of God said, and God will give us the fruit of the Spirit to do so. Yes, He will. The fruits of the Spirit is to help us to go through troubled times. Mm -hmm. Because we're going to need that. You see. Because God will allow us to go through some things, and people will see it, people will witness it what you're going through. And they will tell you, listen, no, no regular person can go through such a thing and still be meek and still be nice and still be humble. Not going off on folks because of your trouble. This is what the fruit of the Spirit is for. Long suffering, meekness, joy, peace that you can only find in Christ Jesus. These are the fruits of the Spirit. It's not just simply laying hands on the sick. That's the fruit of the Spirit, too. But we got to go through trouble and time because we live in a troubled world. And everything that we go through, we must demonstrate Christ. Even though it may hurt us, and sometimes we don't understand it. But God will give us understanding by and by. After he, after he comes, this is why God allowed me to go through this. And what's that going to do? It's going to build our character. Build our faith in Christ that we become stronger in the Lord. You see, this is what God wants. He wants us to get so strong, so intimate with Him that Christ is just oozing out of us. You're no longer the same person. I'm no longer Billy Bob. <laughs> but they call me. They still be like, you know, and Billy. You see. When you call me Billy, Billy Bob, God, I've been on you a long time. <laughs> Sometimes I'm pumping gas. Billy Bob! <laughs> my wife said, who is that? I said, that's one of my fans. <laughs> <laughs> you look like I <laughs> Billy Bob, who is that? That's one of my fans. <laughs> fans of that old man. The old man. I have a new man. They call me Billy Bob now. I mean, I can't say nothing. You know you heard me. Now I got Billy Bob. I said Billy Bob, that man is dead. You see, I'm a new man in Christ Jesus. Thank you, Lord. My name is William Jesse Jesus the third. That's how it's sophisticated. It's not like I'm important. I'm kind of rich. William Jesse Jesus the third. Back. <laughs> That's why you're going to get the boy in trouble now. 
I said, what is your name? He didn't say his name and throw his name in. I said, you throw that thing out. <laughs> and Trump, I already started Trump. <laughs> Gave my son another name. <laughs> and that boy believed it. It took him a long time to wash that out of me. <laughs> and he see him every time, start smiling. And still try to give that name. <laughs> That's not your name. But name don't make character. Come on now. Billy Bob was a worldly man. Mm -hmm. He was a man that was living in sin. Yeah, yeah. So when God saved me, I no longer, I no longer went by that name. Yes, because you. even that name had to change. Right, right. I don't go by the name of the neighborhood. They actually called my name a little Bob. When I graduated, they called my real name. I didn't know why they clapped because they didn't know who it was. <laughs> As I walked across the stage, I heard somebody say, oh man, that's Bill Bob. And they all began to clap. Whistle and all that stuff. But when I got born again, Come on now. Yeah. I had to change that name from the label. I was no longer Bob, but call me by my name. Yes. Which is we. Jesse Jesus. The third. The third. She the third. Her name is Kimberly. William Jesse Jesus. She took on my name, my name. Her name changed. From Yama to Dennis. So I went over here and said, you know, what's up there? Her name William. They said, what? Yeah, her name William. William just be with the third. But you can call her Kimberly. You know, so, so we take away the masculinity. But Lord gave her to me. And she took on my name. I didn't take on her name. My name, last name, ain't y'all. But the fruit of the Spirit is love. Yes. Now we're going to talk about the fruit of the Spirit. And the first thing is love. Amen. Why is it love? Because every other is just a product of love. love. That's so true. Come on. That's why love is the first thing, because God is love. Amen. And all the other fruits of the Spirit is just simply a product love. of the love of God. That's right. Now I said the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy. Peace, long suffering, mm -hmm. gentleness, mm -hmm. goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no love. You see how short that is for us? Mm -hmm. The fruits of the Spirit is this long. And that's just part of it. I mean, the fruit of the, 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 the blessing of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit is this life. But it's very powerful. Amen. Because if you have joy, if you have peace, if you can all suffer, mm -hmm. God can do a great work in you. Yes. 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 You see, and all these things help us get our walk with God. Yes. Because can't you imagine going through one of the most terrible things in your life and you still have peace? Yes. You have still have joy in Instead of going crazy. Yes. Instead of turning your back on God. You can sit like, just like Joe. He said, I came in this world with nothing. I'm going to leave with nothing. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And that's what we have to say sometimes in different situations. When we're going through, Lord, I don't know why. I'm going through it. Joe didn't know why he was going through it. Joe was picked out to be picked up. Have you considered my servant Joe? Joe didn't even know what was going on. Joe was doing everything right. He knew that his kids may be doing something, so what did he do? He made a sacrifice for them. He was doing everything, like going around, helping people in need. Joe was doing everything. That was right. And next thing you know, this tragedy happened in his life. Why go bad? Why don't you just curse God and die? You talk like you've been around in foolish way. You 
You see how wide that was? You've been around that. I, I know you've been hanging around because you're talking the same way they talk. You know, if you keep hanging around sin, you become what it, you know, sin will get on you. You become what you hang around most. That's right. That's right. You hang around foolishness, you won't become foolish. You hang around holiness, you won't become holy. Job didn't know what was going on. But God said to say, where is our comfort? The God already knows. I come up and down to and fro seeking, you know, who I may devour. He said, have you considered my servant Job? God did that. Satan didn't even ask of Job. Have you considered my servant Job? Because he's an upright man. He's a shitty man. He's one of the Greatest man on the face of that earth at that time. But God didn't call him to even be ready. Job was ready, but he didn't know. Job didn't know he was ready. But Job was ready because God allowed him. And God will not allow certain things in our life unless he knows we're ready. Yeah. If we've been fasting and praying and seeking God, there's things that God wants to get out of our life. There's things that God wants to want manifest himself. He wants to receive the glory out of your life. So he allowed things to come. He allowed the devil to come. You can touch his, you can touch his family. You can touch his good. You can touch everything, but don't touch his life. Mm -hmm. yeah. Satan got to do what God said. Mm -hmm. He obeyed God better than some of the church folk. Because whatever he said, the devil don't do it. Yeah. Obey Christ. Right. He know God is real. Because he was there. We believe by faith. That God is real. That's why our faith must increase during our walk with God. Amen. If our faith don't increase, we ought to be more faithful in 21 than we was in 20. Right, right. Our faith must continue to grow in our life daily. If I have the same faith today as I had in 2020, then something happened. There was no growth in my life. And I won't go any further until I allow God to bring up that faith in my life. So he allows certain things to happen in our life. Adversity increases faith. So when you're going through trouble, mm -hmm. make sure you didn't bring it on yourself. And if you did, God will still fix it if you repent of it. Yeah. Right, right, right. But God is going to allow trouble to come our way. Because Jesus said, arm yourself to suffer. He said through much trials and tribulation, we're going to enter into the kingdom of heaven. So this is not an easy way. Don't believe them preachers that they preach blessings all the time. Because some of the blessings is through our adversity. A lot of the, all the blessings is through our adversity. A lot of blessings is in that valley, a place where we don't want to go. Because we don't want trouble. But trouble won't come our way. That's why we must prepare for the trouble. When things are going good, everything you got all, you know, your bills is paid, and the refrigerator is full, the car note's paid, the rent is paid, the mortgage is paid, and, and you still got some money. You better get on your knees and pray. Because <laughs> just as soon as you stand in there, trouble is going to come. And we don't know by the way which it comes. But if we pray and we fast, and we allow the Holy Spirit to incorporate in our lives the fruit of the Spirit, thank you. It'll help us get through these things. Yeah. How can you have peace when a loved one dies and you love them so dearly? Right. A tragedy, a tragic death. You know, some Christian folks don't make it through that. If your spouse died that you love so dearly, you still got to continue on. You just can't lay down and die because your spouse died. Because God will give you not only peace, he will give you joy, and he also will give you understanding. To continue on, all those come through the Holy Spirit of God. If I, if I leave this world, and you go crazy. <laughs> now, y'all remember, she always said, <laughs> <laughs> That's what she did. You know what that tells me? Nah, man, I ain't gonna go crazy. 
She knew she didn't miss me. I'm a great guy. Well, she said, I said, well, you go crazy? She said, uh-huh. No, no, no. But she's going to feel bad. She's going to hurt. Because she's going to miss this guy. But she must continue on in Christ. She can't let that bring her down. She can't allow the devil to come in and destroy you with that. Because he will. He, he's not merciful. He's not merciful. He don't care what he don't care about when your spouse died. He's gonna come and try to steal and kill and destroy you. We must continue on. We must have so much of God that during that, yes, we'll be sad. Yes, we'll be hurt. But Lord, you know. You know. And you was able to keep me through all tragedies, through all trials and tribulations. God is able to keep us. This is what we have to understand. He is more than able to keep us through any tragedy because he's greater than anything that we can go through this earth, in this world. You see? And this is what we have to understand. Jesus is simply looking for faith in his people. He's looking for faithfulness when he comes to this world. The Bible says, when he comes, will I find faith in the land? Will I find people believing despite what's going on? Will I find people believing in me? Will I find people living for me when I come? When I come, will I have a church, a believing, baptized, Holy Ghost filled church that I can take with me? My bride. Jesus come to find him a bride, and it's that church. Are you going to be a part of that bride coming? Are you going to be able to withstand? Wives of the devil. Some people say that wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I said that but we don't hurt it. <clears throat> but it's the wives of the devil. <laughs> Will we be able to stand up against his deception, his trickery? God will give us the power that we need to be able to do so. So you see, all we got to do is tap into that power. After we're born again, you seek the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And when we receive the Holy Spirit, He will apply to you the fruits of the Spirit that will give you power to stand. We understand all you can do. He'll give you the power to stand.